Welcome to the Crypto BS Podcast. I'm Craig. And I'm Al. And today, we got beef. Yeah, so normally what we do is we go over the news, world events, things that impact the market. Not today. But not today. We've got an issue. We've got a differenting, differentiating, I don't even know what the right We have is. a difference in opinions. We have a difference in opinions. A big difference in opinion. It's not even opinion. It's philosophy. Strategy, one might say. I cannot believe the words that come out of Alan's mouth on a daily basis. But yesterday especially, I was flabbergasted. In the past, we've discussed that I'm the one that's more risky. Craig is usually the one that's a little more conservative. But over the last several weeks, that's not been the case. Craig has been the one that has been quite a bit more risky. I have been taking big swings on stupid issues, but yes. But this philosophy goes along with being more risky and less conservative, and I don't know why you're so surprised. I'm, I'm the one going back to conservative, by the way. Like, as in this week you're going back to that? Or no, I just mean, as, in, as in, in, in this argument, I'm going back to being the conservative That one. is true. That yes, is true. I'm going back to my core principles and not swinging for things that I know I should probably not put my money into. Okay, so let's start this off as a would you rather. I think that's the best way to put it. Well, fire away. What would you, how would you Viewers, frame this? How listeners. Frame this? Audience, I need to know, would you rather the crypto market 2x tomorrow? Like in the next 24 hours, everything is up 100%. Or would you rather that the market goes down 50% tomorrow? One day, up 100%, down 50%. Is it double or is it half? And I think most of us would say, I think all but Alan would say, I want to go up 2x tomorrow. I want it doubled up in a day. And me have twice as much value in my crypto. But Alan does not agree. I disagree. I would love for it to get cut in half. And let me reload. Crazy. No, I want to reload back into the market. I've got money on the sideline. I've been expecting this pullback. This is what I've been looking for. And if it were to do that, I would be happy. Alan wants us all to lose more money. It's not lost until you sell. Let's go with talking point one on our argument. Because we have had this argument for we had, we had approximately this argument 17 hours already. 17 and a half. And as usual, you were wrong. <laughs> 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 argument number one i would be so happy if the current value or the, the 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 most recent low that we've had in the crypto market was the bottom and now we are trending flat and tomorrow some awesome news comes out and we 2x and we start riding this bull market up and we can start getting our entry points along these shorter pullbacks from the the bullish trend and we all just start making money but alan doesn't want that alan wants a lower low to be set so that he feels more confident not only more confident that the bottom has has been reached but also that he can get twice as many tokens and coins to hopefully reach the same value that we are trying to guarantee in our would you rather tomorrow. You're confusing a multitude of issues in your ramblings. I don't believe so. Help, help me understand. I don't even know where to start at. You had about eight different things in there that don't make sense. And I have about eight more. Well, if, okay, a 50% decrease in the market across the board may not necessarily mean a new low. A 50% decrease in Ethereum right now may not, that eh, probably is right this second, but when it was at $2,000, you'd still be going down to 1000 where we saw $800 as the low. But we're talking about from today. From it today, it was 800 and it's at 1700 right now. So that'd be at 850 So it'd be retesting the lows, which I am down for. Only on Ethereum. 
a which, it, which has grown in the last couple of weeks faster than everything else. Yeah. But only on Ethereum. What about Bitcoin? You'd be looking at Bitcoin back at... 12,000, which would be... It's not a 24 right now. Is it like 21 right now? Okay. It'd be like 10 and a half. Okay. That is definitely lower than it has been recently. Most certainly, but we're still looking at it. Retesting is that not that, a new low? That would be a new low, but that would be where it has traditionally retraced to. Somewhere between 82 and 90% retracement. And that would be within what we would be looking for from the $60,000 high. For me, that looks like a great entry. Now, that is not a retest of the recent low, but it does hit a mark that I'm interested in because of it meeting that criteria of 82 to 90% of the pullback from the high. So would you like to summarize why you would rather have the 50% rather than the, the 100% gain? Well, what you were saying is, well, hey, if it goes up 100%, then we can look for some of these pullbacks to load into the market and ride it up from there. I, it's the same thing. I want to see a pullback in the market for me to load into. You would just rather see it go up 100% and then go into it. I want to see it pull back 50% and then me go into it at that, at that lower level. My my argument for the hundred percent would be that not only would we have gains and or profits pushing up immediately on the hundred percent, but we know that's not the top. Especially if the market were to go up a hundred percent in a day, there was some dang good news that came out to help drive this hundred percent up. You, this this is for a the entire for the entire a hypothetical market. situation that you are bringing into it. You don't know why you just said it goes up a hundred percent. And now, well, now lo- logically, that, something had to happen to make it go up a hundred percent. From a guy, it didn't just go up. You you hate it when we we spend time discussing the news and these world events that lead up to what we think is going to impact the market. And you're like, nah, not that big of a deal. Now you're like, oh, well, in this case, we're going to have a big push up. And there was some great news that came out on it. Well, now, where, where, where are you at with this? You, you, with what? You're using two arguments. Half the where time, am I at? I'm at the 100% up. That's where but, I'm but at. <laughs> what, what news came out is irrelevant. You're just saying based on the, the rise in the market, you want to have you want it to rise 100 percent and then get into the market okay well let me ask i, di- I didn't say get i'm in right now that's why i want it up 100 percent. we're both in right now correct that's why i want it to go up 100 percent. now obviously if i'm a person that has no money in the market i don't want it going up i'd rather just get in but what i'm trying to say is it's illogical to imagine a scenario in which the entire crypto market doubles in value with no news there has to be good news that would drive it that's not what the argument is over no that's a piece of it Why? because on the flip side there is no logical way for the entire crypto market to go down 50 percent without some extremely bad news and if it naturally just progressed its way down to bitcoin at 10 12 15 000 and you see this as a good entry point that's fine. That's just bear market over time. Some investors are just cutting their losses or there's some slow exits or maybe some minor news here and there, world economic stuff, all the stuff you love to talk about. But in one day, 50%, this is, there's been a major flaw somewhere that has ruined the market at least short term. And now we've all lost value. Not, okay. So what if we have another virus that comes out and it's like oh man we're gonna have to shut it down and that that, because that's what happened in march of 2021 we had to or 20 was it 2021 or 2020 2020 and what was the value then doesn't matter it was it dropped it doesn't matter the value of it doesn't matter well it matters because has it recovered it did recover well that's why i'm asking what was the price i don't i don't remember what it was then 18 15 thousand 18 thousand i don't know but it dropped all the way back down to three I would rather get in at three than get in at 10, 12, okay. 18, whatever and then it was. What at. did it take for it to come back up? It doesn't matter what it took. It took time. That's what it took. It took a lot of really good news. It took time. It took global recovery. It took big businesses buying in. It took banks. No, it didn't. It took big names 
helping drive more. Wrong. 100% it wrong. It took new innovations and ideas. It defined recovery. Back to the original spot, it took a month. And it was back up. To get to 60,000 to 10x from there. All I'm arguing is that if something really bad happens, I could drive the market down 50% in was a day. Was that really bad? Was that really bad? No. Hold on. 50% in a day, which I'm about to start looking up to see. How big of a drop it was. How big of a drop. Go ahead. And how much it was in one day. Um, if I can find a one day. that I'll find the biggest day drop I can. But if something bad comes out and hurts the market that bad, we don't know how much lower it's going to go. That's just one day. That's one day drop. It could, it could be something really bad. It could be an exploit that crashes everything. And the first day, people are selling out 50%. And the next day, it's another 40%. And everything's 10% value. I said 40%, not off the new price for the day, but 40% off the original price. And now you're at 10% of the remaining value that just dwindles into nothing. Like, uh, what's the one I've already forgot about? Luna. Luna. There we go. That still didn't even happen in a day. No, no, no. But the first day was pretty dang bad. No, I think the first day it dropped 30%. Well, let us see. Let us well, see. So, continue. The news, the news is irrelevant. What we're talking about is the philosophy of how you would like to enter. I would like to enter once it's down, regardless if it's one day, one week, or one month. I want to put my money in at a lower price. That means exponential growth as opposed to waiting for it to go up 100% and then load into it. That's not smart. Now, it might be safer that way to ease into it, to wait until it's going up, but how do you know that's not the new, the new high and then it comes down from there? Let me ask you this, Craig. Would, would, let me, it, would, let me ask it, would a new Whoa. high coming down from there not be better for you to go up, take profits, and rebuy it in? Well, that was my question. If it goes up 100% tomorrow, are you selling all of your crypto? I'm scaling out, as per our rules. Do you want to talk about the rules? <laughs> I, I don't know that I can remember all of them off the top of my head. <laughs> Rule zero is have a plan. One is be patient. Scale in, scale out. Scale in, scale out. RSI, RSI before, before you buy. buy. Know the patterns? Know the patterns. Okay. If so the pattern breaks, sell. Or so, get out. okay, so it goes up 100% and then you scale out. What are you scaling out? You're going to sell 20%, 25%, 50%, 80%? i would be trying to get at least half of my initial investment out, if not all, depending on how big it is. And at 100% from where we're at right now, I'd, I'd probably err on the side of half to 75% of my initial investment which would not be half of what it is currently now. All right. So you'd be selling the majority of what you have into it in, at that 100%. It would not be a majority, no. It'd be, it'd be about 30 to 40%. Okay. So you'd be, you'd be selling out. I'd be scaling out, yes. Okay. And if we continue to go up, you continue to scale? Continue. Okay. Yeah. So for me, 100%, 120%, 150%. I'm not in for that. That's not what I'm here for. 100%, that doesn't do it for me. You're telling me you wouldn't scale out at 100%. I'm saying that doesn't excite me. From right now, if it goes up 100% tomorrow with what I have in the, in the market currently, I'm not getting out. And that's fine. That doesn't have to be the end game. That's just tomorrow. But you, you would scale out, would you not? No. You wouldn't, you wouldn't take any of your crypto out expecting that after a 100% move in one day, it's not going to pull back for better entry at any point in near near history. Oh, but Craig, it had such good news. It's surely going to keep going. And you can scale out and wait on that. That's why, that's why you don't pull all your money out. I'm not looking for that. I have such a hard time believing that you would not be happy that your, your assets go up in value 100% in one day. I want more. I mean, you can still get more, though. No. It doesn't have to be out. Yeah, for me, I Heck, want Heck, you could long them. I'm looking for more growth. I don't want 100%. 100%, 100 
Uh, go buy Amazon and wait five years. You got your 100%. I don't want that. I'd like to water bet on that 100% in five years on Amazon. From right now? Yeah. Taken. <laughs> Put it down. You don't think it's going to be $300 in five years? I'll take that. All day. All day, he says. Yeah. So, for me, 100% is not worth me getting in and out of. I'm looking for I'm looking for more. And for me, more would be waiting if it goes down 50% for me to unload into where we'd be at right now, $800 ETH and $10,000 Bitcoin. Yeah, that means go. Let's Now we can start unloading. But that, I, following the same rules, scaling in, I'm going to put the majority of it in, but I'm still have some sitting on the sideline, still have some dry powder waiting for it to continue to go back. Because I believe that's what's coming forward. It may not be in one day, but over the next three or four months, I am. I have information for you. Fire away. I have two things. The first is regarding the, the, B, the Bitcoin price we had talked about for Corona crash. Okay. Uh, the week of, and I had weak candlesticks because scrolling through days was going to take too long. But the week of February 12th, 2020. It was March when we had the biggest pull, but go ahead. The biggest pull, but not the start of the pull. Okay. The, the initial drop of COVID. All these red candles here. Yes. Mm. That is a week. Not a day. That is a week. From high to low, not just the body of the candle, wicks included, just over 10% drop. If you want to take the biggest drop in there, the biggest drop high to low for a week was just about 50%. But that was a week, and that was after five weeks of bad news. That was bad news that was not crypto-related. It was general bad news. I know. What was the... Which so, makes it better and easier for crypto to recover from because it wasn't crypto-directed. In which it did. In which it did, but it wasn't crypto news. Well, on, on that, can you see where we started, where we ended? Started dollar with what? Dollar-wise? At what point in time? During that week. During that week... 70, it was, I just turned it off. 76 ish, 77 ish, 100, down to about 3,800. Okay. From high to low. So, what you're saying is you would have rather bought in at 14,000 than bought in at 3,800. Because that's what I'm No, 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 no. I'm already in and I want it to go up 100%. I'm not saying buy in. I'm not saying it goes up 100% and then I want to buy in. I'm saying I want I want my current assets to go up 100% tomorrow and then let the market play out from there. I don't want to, to reload with new money at twice the price. Who says you have to reload at twice the price? I If I'm going to get in, if I'm going to put more assets, buy more assets, then that's what I would have to do. What do you think the RSI is going to be at double? Double in a day. It's going to be <laughs> nuts. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous. And you don't think it's going to pull back at all? You don't Listen, think there's going to this, be any sort of retracement these, for you to buy in on? This is all hypothetical, whatever, whatever. Everything I, this, in this is hypothetical. I know, but, but <laughs> everything from, from the news to, uh, you know, how much is it going to pull back or when is it going to pull back? I'm using common sense logic to anticipate I, why a movement like this would happen. That's the same thing as saying, well, what happens if it drops 50%? You don't think the RSI is going to be at the bottom and there's not going to be a bounce? I do think there's going to be a bounce. I just don't know how much higher it's going to go. I'm operating under the, the known fact that the assets I have can double in a day and then I can decide what to do from there. You're operating under the known fact that your assets are going to lose half their value and that you can buy in a better price with an unknown that they will ever recover. Well, if we're operating from a logical standpoint, they will recover. How would you know that? How do you know that it's going to pull back? Well, because that's the would you rather. 
it has to happen for no, no. the would you rather. For, after your 100% increase, how do you know that it's going to pull back? You I, don't. I don't know, but at least I'm up. I know I'm going to be up 100%. That's the known part of the would you rather. Well, I'm okay with the risk. I'm willing to assume the risk of a 50% pullback on my current assets that I have mm-hmm. in order to throw in a whole lot more money in the... I don't want to say hopes in the belief that it's going to go up and beyond the original set price in the middle, the the original starting value. If we were to take both of our arguments to an extreme beyond what we're talking about right now, mine would continue to make sense and yours would not. And what I mean is if you made it instead of doubling in price, it went up 100x tomorrow versus yours goes down to 1 100th. It goes down to 1% of what it is now. Would you be excited about getting in at 1% of what it is right now if the market dropped to 99% in a day? Or would you rather have 100 times your money tomorrow? Mm. I would probably rather have like <laughs> 1,000 times my money tomorrow. But, Alan, you get but, to buy in at such a great price point. That is true. And it's going to recover. That is true. You have faith. Oh, yeah, it is. And I do have faith that it's going to recover. But but we're talking about a whole lot more money when we're talking about a 100 times my money versus a doubling of my money that I already have in there. Because a hundred times my money, that's the return that I'm looking for. That's what I want. Like I said, it doesn't get me excited to double my money. A hundred X my money? So there is a there is a limit here. At some point on my side of the argument, you'd rather be on my side. At some point of because the what, return. The return the so, risk versus reward. So and right, that's where we differ at most of the time. And so, 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 what are you the, willing to risk versus what are you will, you're willing to gain? What are you going to get from it? A hundred, a hundred times, yeah. That's like saying, well, would you rather you know lose a dollar today or have a million dollars tomorrow? Well, okay, come on. <laughs> I'm so, but what I'm saying is there, there's a point now. I want to figure out where the point is. We're at a hundred percent. You're saying no. What about a thousand percent? Would ten x be in your range? Ten x is probably close. Obviously, I'd rather have a hundred, or fifty, or twenty, or anything more than ten. But are you saying is this uh, a ten x tomorrow versus a fifty percent pullback, or is this ninety percent pullback tomorrow well, versus let's, a? Let's let's take your favorite. Or, or most uh, most wanted pullback percentage, and let's put it against the minimum amount it would take to beat that. So, for example, would would you be happier with a thirty percent pullback tomorrow or a sixty percent pullback tomorrow? Hmm. For me, the optimal buying we'll, we'll have to compartmentalize this a little bit more, I guess. The optimal buy-in point for me, and I've said this before, for for Bitcoin, between ten and fourteen thousand, that's what I'm good at. I, I like that number. Okay, so I feel that's... confident. I feel confident that we're going to see a bounce between. So we're looking at about that a forty time. to fifty percent pullback is your optimal zone that you're wanting to see. Yes. Okay. What percentage gain tomorrow would you have to make to not want that pullback? Would 10x be enough to not want that, or is that still a little short? Mm. Boy, that's a good question. I, I would rather have more than that. I think I'd still rather go in... 15x? Uh, uh, man. I guess I, I may I may do it at 15x. Okay. Okay, I have one more thing to put onto this discussion because obviously we were not we're not going to agree on the point of pullback versus return. Mine is obviously at a I, I mean heck I'd be happy with the market going up fifty percent tomorrow versus a 
25% pullback. Wouldn't want either, either of them. I know you'd still rather have the pullback. So obviously we're on different scales, but at some point you could flip over. At some point I'm either going to be indifferent or not flip. There's Nothing's going to get me to want to pull back. The percentage is either going to get so small that I'm indifferent or it's going to be so large that I'm taking the upside. That depends on how big of a short you have at that time, doesn't it? That was exactly what I was about to bring up is <laughs> the other side to this is I could be indifferent on either because I can long and short either one being known. If I know what's going up 100% tomorrow, I'll cash out everything I got right now and go long. I Why not? It's going up 100% and I can 10x certain assets. That's 1,000% I can gain. And the same thing is true on the short. I can go through and 10x, but there is a difference in I, I can't go up a thousand percent on a short because I can't. You can only go. I can only go to however much I can buy in on. Yeah. And then at 50 percent, I make half of it. So it'd be more like 500 percent instead of a thousand percent. So I guess I wouldn't be indifferent. I'd, I'd still be on the long. So I guess I'm I'm firmly planted on the I want you the up. You wouldn't short it and then get out? And then buy in for a long at that point. But I could do the same on the flip where I could long it, get out, and short it expecting it to pull back. Yeah, but if you missed on that, you'd get hammered. But I don't, you, have to, I don't have to put it all in, though. I can, I can take my profit, which is another rule somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Take profit. Take profit. But I, I can take my profit. At an amount that I'm happy with. I mean, heck, I just 10x on the long, you know, the 100% times the 10x margin. I could take seven or eight of that and be happy and take the other one, two X of my money and, and have some fun or some investment, you know, shenanigans. I don't know. I'm firmly planted, firmly planted on a, I'd rather it double tomorrow. But that's okay. Well, let me ask you this. We, we've put forth some me being a little more risk on strategy and you being a little more conservative strategy pushing forward with this what do you see over the next couple of months how do you how are you going to proceed in your investment are you planning on it to go long are you seeing that coming i i cannot say that i am firmly convinced of anything i can say that I believe, let's say, at a 7 out of 10, that we have started to see the floor for this cycle of, of the bear market. I feel good about that dip down to 18. We haven't seen it dip down again. We've seen some news with like the Ethereum merge coming out to start to spark some enthusiasm. I've said multiple times on this podcast, Bitcoin does not like to be under 20,000. And every time I've said it, it may have dipped under for a couple hours, but it's always came right back up. I feel very good about the $20,000 floor. I wouldn't say it's a strict line of 20,000 because like I said, it'll dip down. But if you would put like a bar on the graph instead of a line, if you took a bar that was like plus or minus a thousand and give it from 19 to 21, I feel very good in that support for Bitcoin. And I think it can sustain this level without any more significant bad news, waiting for the good news of the Ethereum merge launching and it going through its different phases and, you know, maybe global economics start turning around. And now we start getting some positivity in the market that will bring us back into the 30s and then back into the 40s and then just gain traction and hopefully, you know, 100 percent by tomorrow. <laughs> well, the Ethereum merge scares the hell out of me. I mean, you want to talk about that 50% pullback? Let there be a bug in ETH2. Let them catch that come September 20th or September 25th. You want to see a 50% pullback? Check that date. That's when that would happen. The day that they find a bug in there, it's over. We saw that last week with Cardano during their test net phase, we're not talking about them rolling it out. They're still doing the test net. That's where you're supposed to find it. Oh man, the sky's falling. Cardano's unrecoverable. It's a horrible asset. It's never going to. 
It was during the test net. That's when you're supposed to find that. Aren't you glad that they found it then as opposed to unrolling it like ETH has been trying to do for the last six years and try to roll that out? If there's a problem with ETH, it is going to be a bad day, and I'll see my 50%. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of us may get what we want after all. Well, I got to tell you. you I, don't, know. I don't believe we'll see 100% in a day ever if anytime soon not for the whole market you know maybe individual tokens sure probably not the big ones but i mean i i can foresee maybe not a day with 50 percent, but i could i mean it happened in the covid crash a week where there was about a 50 percent crash so yeah i mean if, if ethereum launches and there's a bug and someone exploits it and a lot of money's lost and eh, yeah i could see a lot of people losing faith in in the new eth and uh there being a lot of sell-offs and maybe you could get what you want on that but on the flip side i could see in a world of many possibilities and unlimited imagination that the week the ETH 2.0 launches, tons of enthusiasm, new people coming in, the speed and the gas prices are awesome, the war in Ukraine ends, a magical fairy flies in and gives us the the answers to all of our problems, and that week we we go up 50% as well. Well, traditionally what we've seen on these new assets launching and, and new things happening is the 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 big guys are doing the uh, buy the rumor, sell the news thing. And 48 hours before that, September the 13th, that's when I'm looking for a pullback on ETH. False. Water bet. I know you're not looking for the 13th, and I'll tell you why. Because you don't think it's going to happen this year anyway. That is true. But I could see them on the 13, 14, 15, any one of those days, they could be like, yeah, we're going to have to postpone it another week. That's going to be our best case scenario. The week that it's happening, two days before, whatever's going to happen, on, it's supposed to happen. Whenever that's supposed to launch, it's done. But ETH2 is still not going to be ready on September 15th. That's phase one of five for the urge, purge, verge, surge, and whatever else urge has got going on. Was it splurge? God bless splurge. <laughs> Sad, but that is so true. Is is that the one? Yeah, it is that. Oh, that's it. That's so great. So we're still we're still years from being able to have this fully implemented. Um, and I, I I don't know exactly to what uh, what level all of this is going to be occurring and how this is all going to pan out before it's all said and done. But uh, I I'd still take a a short the week of uh, of the launch, if we get that close. A known week of the launch or the September 15th week well, of the supposed I would, launch? I would be planning on it of the supposed launch. If we get to the 13th and it's still a go, that's when I'd be looking at doing a short. This is a whole new... 30 minute argument for me to say I disagree, but we'll, well save this see. for we'll, another day. Well, hey, we'll save it for that week's cast. Yes, we will. And we'll have to have a revisit on this, but I'd be down for doing that. I, we'll look at it. Maybe I'll do that for my short for the challenge that week. Mm. We'll see. Speaking of the challenge, just uh, real quickly, you have any plans for your extra $100 this week? Mm. I may short ETH this week. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, wow, we're well, talking I'm about lucky it. that I didn't short ETH last week. Oh, my gosh. Because you got to tell that story. I'm sorry, long, long ETH last yeah, week. Yeah, tell that story. on the podcast last week, <laughs> I said that I was going to long ETH right here, right now. And I was in the process of doing it when we started getting onto Gary or Gary. Gary, yeah. And then I said, man, I really want to go short Gary. But then I could not. I, I don't know. We, we looked at our, our different devices and... On, on my phone, it shows that it is an isolated margin for KuCoin, and everywhere else it shows that it's not. And I just, I couldn't, it doesn't seem that it's actually there, even though it looked like it should have been an opportunity. So I never did move my money anywhere in all the confusion. And then in the next day, Ethereum drops. It was pretty much dropping from then, from that point on. Like it went up where sitting there like, man, I just missed it. It's already up $20. But that was it. That was the spike from then. And then from the rest of that, it was... It was going down. And if you all bought. And it went down, what, probably $150 on the price? Oh, yeah, every bit. 
It yeah. went all the way down to 1520. So I got lucky. So you're looking at maybe shorting. But I'm if you would hit Gary, if you would have shortened it then, you would have nailed it. I would have nailed it if KuCoin would have not lied to me. But I did hit I did hit the ETH short on Saturday and I did catch that twice and I also used your big rip uh short with Chili's this weekend as well. That had a it had a big run up. Went mm, to like uh, the gym box. You used the gym box technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. So, well, it, it wasn't even. I don't even know that it was in gym box, but I just saw that I had been, had a big run up. They had some good news come out on it on some NFT stuff or whatever. But it had gone up to about I don't know. Think it was twenty two or twenty three cents, and was starting to pull back. And I got in around nineteen and a half, almost twenty cents, and it came all the way back down to I think sixteen, where I got out at. It was seventeen, and it got out. And then it's pulled up, and since then it's it's run all up twenty seven cents right Ooh, now. You so got out at a good time, then. I did. Like I nailed the bottom of it, but uh, it was uh, it was a it was a good one. That doesn't happen often, but I got it on that one. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's looking looking pretty good. So well, I'm uh, looking at just doing the same old same old. I'm gonna like I said, I feel very good about the floor for Bitcoin. My bots have been trading very well. I'm in the infinity grid, so I'm not worried about it going slightly bullish. And, and I don't have a top end for it to get out of a spot grid. So I, I might as well just uh, put my extra 100 back in there. Um, well, I feel we, pretty good about that. For me, we've had a big, we've had a big run up this week from ETH. Like I said, it was down around 1528, and it's all the way up to 1720, I think is what it's hit today. And I think that uh, we'll, we'll have some news come out tomorrow uh from uh from the fed i think we'll have a good pullback uh potentially this weekend if that news is is not very good because they'll impact the stock market which will flow down to us and uh i'd like to see it pull back now if it did pull back again and hit that 1520 again i feel a little more confident on going along with it but uh we'll see i'm going to watch it close and uh, we'll see what happens so that's it yeah Yep, let's do All it. All right, well, uh, go ahead and like the video, especially double like it, which you can't do, but if you could double like it for me doing the intro this week, and let us know in the comments which side of the would you rather you'd be on. Would you rather the market double in price tomorrow or pull back 50%? This has been Crypto BS. I'm Craig. And I'm Al. And we'll see you next week.